welcome to the Tourism Hub podcast, a podcast devoted to you and your excellence, providing inspiration and education for the entrepreneurs, experience makers and excellent seekers of our industry to take your tourism business and career to a whole new level. And I am your host, Despina Karatius. Relax. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Tourism Hub. My name is Despina Karatius. I will be your host and with me today, I have a very, very special guest. Her name is Jo Circuit and Jo is what you would call a wonderful combination of wellness and experience making goodness. What I love about Jo, she really walks the wellness walk. And like I said, she's got a wealth of tourism experience behind her in what she now runs in her new business, Revitalize Lifestyle. Welcome, Jo. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Hi, Despina. Lovely to be here and lovely to have a chat with you. Yes. Jo, tell me about your journey thus far. It's such a interesting and uh, beautiful one. So your big why, I guess, the purpose of starting Revitalize Lifestyle. Tell me about how you got to be here from a very, uh, I guess, busy travel agency lifestyle. Yeah, so I um, I started quite young working in the travel industry and I worked for STA Travel for um, many years and I was managing um, several of their large, large, large branches at the time. Uh, I love travel, you know, the travel and tourism, it's, you know, it's exciting, it's fun, it's fast, but it's also you're doing between 12 and 15 hours a day. On weekends, you're traveling overseas and you're just um, out partying with the groups. And it was a wonderful lifestyle, but my body started getting a bit run down. And I was on a trip in Africa and I'd been over there for six weeks. And I contracted a unusual illness called Bilharzia, which actually was like worms attacking my body. So that sort of crashed my system. And when I come back to work, I literally, um, my whole body crashed and I sort of led into quite a severe uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and um, fibromyalgia. So I was unable to work. So at that time, I decided I loved my career in um, travel, but I just needed a break. So I quit my job and um, went back to study a degree in naturopathy and reflexology, massage, and a lot of other things, which actually helped me heal myself through a lot of different things like naturopathy and herbs, um, acupuncture, and reflexology. I thought if I could heal my own body, I could help others. So that sort of led me onto the the wellness sort of area after I sort of worked at that stage in um, travel. But I have integrated since then, which we'll go into later, of how I work still in the tourism industry as well as the wellness industry. Fantastic. Now, is that something heading down the path of um, natural remedies? Is that some, had you exhausted a lot of traditional methods and medicine, or was that something you just knew you wanted to stay clear of? I did try to start because of the type of illness the Bill Hutsey I had. They'd said sort of um, from history, if it de- um, decided to erupt in the body, I could die within 48 hours. So oh at that time, I was oh trying every drug or every anything that the mm. doctors could try, but nothing was working and my body was just getting worse and worse. So I sort of had exhausted in that way the medical treatment. And, you know, medical is great for so many things, but it just wasn't helping me and I was just getting um, worse and more sick at, um, at that time. So I had to look for other options of how to heal myself. Oh, good for you. And now you've had your business revitalized lifestyle since 2002. So you've been in this this industry now in wellness. And like we said, we'll talk about the experiences that you offer uh, your clients. And speaking of your clients, who do you mostly cater for? So it's pretty much that everyone and um, anyone, but I do do a range of things. So I work a lot in um, corporate companies and working with, you know, how to create positive change and the positive psychology, emotional intelligence, along with the wellness. 
But then I do, I've done a lot of prenatal retreats and I do a lot of lifestyle retreats around Australia that anyone can come to. So whether I've got some that are um, for people that are quite ill or have had sort of chronic illness and others that people are burnt out and we just sort of focus on how to rebuild, you know, the strength and stress resistance and so Wonderful. I should let everyone know too the way we met. One of the great things about having the honour and the opportunity to be invited to speak at conferences is meeting sisters from other misters like Joe. So Joe, I had the I watched you in action and she captivated the room with these brain exercises just simple simple little things that I still do and I and I've uh, do it with my kids it was so great and that was a volunteers conference where you had a completely different market to all of that again so I can see how this is core core I guess tips and strategies and uh, wealth lifestyle adjustments that people can make in any phase of their lives. Would that be a correct thing to say? Yes, definitely. And I know with a certain, certain retreats or seminars that I run, depending on the type of market I come, I tailor it to exactly that type of people. As you know, you mentioned with the volunteers we did for the tourism, they are generally a, an older market, you know, semi-retired or retired. So we sort of, you know, worked it out towards, you know, where they are at their life, whether they're looking, um, you know, traveling, whether they look after grandkids and all that sort of thing. So I just cater and tailor the um, actual seminars and talks to the type of people that are coming. Wonderful. And making that transition, you've gone, you've had this awful thing happen after your travels. You've gone and studied to heal yourself and then making the transition that this is, this has helped me so much. I want to spend my time educating and sharing this with as many people as I can and starting your own business. So back in 2002, what were some of your most challenging times in starting your business so actually starting out what did you find was was something that you can share with us yeah so I at the time I was I set up a business with three other business partners um, in Melbourne and we ran a, a large college um, and clinic that we had 15 practitioners working for us and um, a college where we did sort of diploma courses. So it was quite a big business and my part of the business was the corporate wellness. So I'd go into corporate companies and run a well-being program for the corporate sector. And it was very young at that stage. A lot of corporate companies really needed it, but they were new to it. So it was actually a good time to get into that because we were one of the first in Melbourne to actually really get into that. But the harder part was it at the time was Still myself and actually one of my business partners had chronic fatigue syndrome. So we could do lots of work, but then we'd have to rest for a little while and things like that. So, But having our other two business partners there to help us and assist us along that way was great. But yeah, I think the challenges of with that business, we decided to sell that because I, well, we actually all moved to different parts of the world and I decided I was getting quite burnt out and I wanted um, a break from the busy Melbourne life so I actually sort of um, packed my bags and moved to Anglesey by myself with you know no house and no friends and no job and felt like I just needed a bit of a break and yeah decide to sort of relocate myself to this surf coast and reevaluate what I wanted to do with the wellness area and because I missed the tourism part so much I actually incorporated by working at the visitor center in Torquay so I was still working at promoting um, the Great Ocean Road and the surf coast but was also being able to do my wellness business as well. So I sort of did both at the same time, which I loved. Excellent. Now, with that, when you made that decision to sell, what was it? How did that come about? Or the, the aha moment that you must, you may have had that this isn't for me and I want to have a sea change because that's a big move again after starting it and it seems quite successful uh, with the college and deciding to sell it. Did you have a big aha moment that drove that decision? Yeah, I think that we all started to have our specialties. Two of the business partners loved running the courses and so another business partner really loved running their clinic and I really loved seeing clients um, one-on-one, but the, I really enjoyed the corporate so and speaking to a larger group of people. So, and having a business that size to 
maintain all of that is quite difficult to sort of grow because you need to grow quite substantially and we all had different focuses. So we sort of decided that, okay, I'm going to do this and this person wanted to do that and that's all fine, but maybe we can sort of look at different areas. And in the meantime, as I said, I sort of, you know, love traveling and still was traveling the world and really thought, I remember traveling in New Zealand and thinking, I love adventure. I love exploring new places. Well, I can actually incorporate both my passions of wellness and tourism together and incorporate tours that I can, you know, or wellness retreats that I can have the wellness side and heal people, but also they could have adventure activities like going, um, you know, whitewater rafting or rock climbing or bungee jumping or whatever it is that he, they um, want to do. So incorporating that wellness side as well as that tourism and adventure side as well. So I really thought that felt perfect for me to do and to focus on for the future. Love it. And what's what's something that a lot of people that come to your retreats, what's something that always stands out as what they say afterwards of joining you on what I'd imagine would be quite life-changing experience if they're coming there with any physical or mental challenges that they're, they're attracted to go onto a retreat to get away and, and have some healing work done. Yeah, my main aim for people to is really just to, to motivate them and inspire them and educate them so they can make positive change in their life. I feel that a lot of time people like to sort of handball the responsibility of, you know, people may go to a doctor and they just say to the doctor, you need to fix me. And, you know, it's up to the doctor or to the naturopath. But what I want people is to, you know, allow themselves to know that they can heal themselves and take that responsibility back. So I can show them the tools, the techniques, the activities and all the wisdom that I have. So then they can go home and enable that they have the power to heal themselves. So after a retreat, people find that a lot of the things we learned, it's quite simple, but now being able to incorporate them to the daily lives they've actually been able to shift a lot of you know stress anxiety health problems they've had you know high blood pressure or just learning ways that they can you know exercise more in a different way rather than going on marathons they might start qigong or tai chi so giving people the option to change their life but not having to be a dramatic change that's too hard for them we don't want to make things hard for people to change in their normal life because we are so busy we've got so many commitments with work and family we want to make things as simple as possible and that's what people find after it that wow I can just incorporate a few simple changes and have a dramatic change in my my life oh I love that Joe that's so true that's me I want to change I'll go and do a marathon then you're completely burnt out and then you've got a whole other heap of challenges to deal with when you're just burning the candles at both end I love that so today what what is the main thing that gets you really pumped and out of bed in your business today so I feel that I just on a daily basis, I love being able to help people, as I was saying, with making simple but powerful changes in their life. And not just necessarily like if I'm working with people in their workplace, but how then they can incorporate that on another level at home with their families and friends, but also see how they can change the way they think. You know, a lot of the time we do sit in that you know the negative mindset apparently like unfortunately like our brain is programmed to think in the negative and it's a lot of the time hard for us to change it into the positive and um like for an example if you know someone says to you just be um i love that dress you're wearing you're like oh thanks that's great but you sort of forget about that you know compliment very quickly whereas if someone said to you i really hate that hairdo you've got like why did you do that then you'll remember that for the next like five weeks of why did that person say that <laughs> so we also like it's one of those things that we forget how when people compliment us or when we've had a success or we've done something really well we sort of forget or we only celebrate them for a moment whereas if it's a negative thing we sort of sit and dwell on that for way too much time so I love that in my daily life I can show people how to change that mindset into the positive so we then don't actually automatically go to that negative and think of the good things that are going on in our life a quick other example is like you know if we have like eight parts of our life we say you know work home health holidays and that sort of thing and there might be one part of that it's pretty crappy at the moment it could be you know, at work, they're going through redundancies and everything's pretty crap. Whereas um, we can focus on that. But if we look at the other seven parts of our life, we've really good health, our family are thriving, we've got two holidays planned, and everything else is really good. That's seven parts of our life, but we focus on that just that one part. 
and sort of don't realize that, hey, you know, 70% of our life is actually really awesome. And it's only that small bit at the moment that we're finding challenges. So I try to, I love doing that on a daily basis of showing people the bigger picture rather than just focus, focusing on that small part that we're, a lot of people just focus on. Oh, focus goes where focus grows, hey? That exactly. is so, so true. We do tend to focus focus on that. And if we, if there is a compliment, then we'll question it. Oh, really? You think so? Like it's, exactly. it's hard to even say thank you sometimes when you receive a compliment. So when... When we look at, I guess, when, when you were starting out, if anyone's listening and they're thinking of starting a business or want to change their career or change, you know, sell their business, I guess in the beginning, what was holding you back to start? It was interesting because I was so passionate about wellness and also the tourism, I really I maybe I'm just a bit crazy, but I had the courage and I just went forward and just opened my business and I just started scheduling retreats. And I think because I was passionate about what I wanted to do, like that retreats were just filling and I just felt that was, you know, it was just working, it was in flow. The things I find was ch- like challenging, I still do now. I have two young ch- children, a three and a five year old. So finding that balance without, I have so many ideas and things I want to do, but I could have to at the moment, you know, just balance it a bit. So not do as much as, you know, I would like to in the future. So, but I think if you have the passion, you feel like that you can create something fantastic. You just want to, you know, try something new. I say you just go for I mean, of course, you've got to evaluate, you know, costs and, you know, leaving a paid, secure job to doing something of your own. But again, you know, life's always a gamble. And, you know, maybe you can start doing it on a part time basis, which I um, had done at the start as well, is, you know, just sort of set up something on a part time basis while you're doing your other job. And then once it slowly grows, you might think, okay, now I can let go of the other job. And also doing some research as well. I mean, I'd looked into a lot of the research and even though I felt it was working because I was getting the people on my retreats and coming to my clinic, I also did um, the research about the global wellness tourism and saw that the revenue had grown like like that was $495 billion in 2013 and um, within two years it had gone up 14%. So people really wanted wellness tourism. They really wanted to create you know, a healthy lifestyle. And you know, like these days when people go on holidays, some people just want to still go and um, lay on the beach and that's fantastic. Or they just want to go to Gold Coast to the theme parks and it's all fantastic. But some people are looking for adventure, like going on a mountain bike ride in Italy, or they're wanting to do a cooking class in France, or they're wanting to do a textile class in, you know, Peru. So people are looking at incorporating their wellness in their travel these days. Define wellness tourism specifically. Wellness tourism is that exclusive to going on a retreat? No, so definitely it also includes all those sort of active and adventure courses and you know tours as well. So that it, and it also sort of inc- incorporate if you go on a you know food and food adventure in Italy and things like that, they incorporate that. But it also, which is not my area, but they also include, you know, how big, um, you know, plastic surgery or dental work over in Vietnam or Thailand or Bali is becoming as well. So they include that as well. But I think a lot of the market is also the wellness or the spa retreats. So, you know, all the lovely spa resorts they have in Australia and in Bali and Thailand and over in Europe. So the spa resort part is has brought up that expenditure a lot as well because everyone really wants to go and somewhere they can have a massage and a facial and have some yoga and, you know, have some walks and things like that. It's it's interesting, isn't it, that you think of yoga retreats and meditation retreats and or there is a stronger awareness of going overseas to do that. I don't know whether it's just me, but I think there's definitely a huge gap in our broader as a destination, Australia, or even in where we both are in Victoria, there's definitely a big gap there. Oh, yes, I agree. Opportunity. Oh, yes. And I think that's where I also found, I know there's still like there's a lot up in Queens, or not a lot, but there's a fair few in Queensland because of the warmer weather. But I also wanted to make it access for people that 
necessarily don't have time to fly or don't like flying or they just want to get away for a three-day retreat, you know, on the weekend. And, you know, Australia, um, Victoria is such a beautiful place. We have so much to offer, and especially down where I live, down on the Great Ocean Road. You know, I love being able to incorporate that wellness there, but also, you know, we have lots of, you know, we have zip lining and, you know, rock climbing and we have the 12 apostles and, you know, I love incorporating those beautiful places because you know Victoria's gorgeous so even though we don't have the warmer weather all year round there are so many other bonuses to come and do a retreat in Victoria because we have so many other beautiful things we can offer people. Couldn't agree more. Joe. what's the best advice you've ever received in business or life or in your wellness uh, journey thus far? I feel that of course there's been so many (laughs) great things but I find when I worked in the travel industry earlier on and being quite young, I was quite stressed a lot. It was a very stressful job. And as I said, probably working 15 hours a day didn't help. But I've over time have realized, you know, that the stress of I was worrying so much, you know, about what's happened in the past and things that we can't change. And then I was all anxious about what could happen in the future. And I'd been told by, you know, a few of my mentors and teachers about if we we know we can't change the past so even if something bad's happened we can say okay that was really crap and we you know we you know we, let's learn from that and if something in the future we can't change so and they say 99 percent of the time we worry about things in the future that are never going to happen so i sort of now i found from my mentors is just really being in the moment more not worrying about the future not being concerned about the past as much and just really focusing on the now and we can get so much more done we can be more focused we're not wasting our energy on things that are not worth worrying about and one of my big things is you know if we keep worrying you know I feel in the wellness industry or my school of thought of if, when we actually worry about things that creates a physical um, issue in our body. So, you know, sometimes if people worry a lot, they might have stomach aches, they might get heart palpitations, they may have bad digestion. And the worst thing I see with my clients is when their emotions have manifested into the physical form in their body. So I find from what I have learned in the past that we need to try to get that mind to to stop stressing about a lot of things because otherwise we're going to have a lot of major illnesses in the future because our emotions have, you know, manifested into a physical problem in our body. And as a daily ritual or a personal habit that you have that contributes to you staying in that present awareness to enjoy the now and not be affected by past past or yesterday's events or worrying about the future, what's a personal habit that you have that contributes to your success of, of staying present? Yeah, I do a, a couple of things. One thing in the morning, when I used to, well, when I have a shower, I used to, that used to be my thinking time and I used to have 10,000 thoughts going through my head and I really concentrate in the shower now when I'm actually just washing my hair with a shampoo, feeling it on my fingers and in my hair. So really coming back to that present moment of what I'm doing now and I'm finding when I'm actually bringing myself back to the present moment I'll actually just get those important things that I need to do during the day rather than the 10,000 things that I need to do or worried what I didn't do yesterday. The other one important thing is I find with um, eating, when I'm eating a meal, and this doesn't happen all the time, but when I'm more mindful of eating, I find that, you know, your body can digest the food more. So your body is actually really being focused you know, I'm digesting the food. So it allows my mind to just rest and concentrate on the taste of the strawberries or the granola. And I think I mentioned this in the um, talk that you heard me talking about is if we eat on the run, our body automatically, mind says, okay, switch off the digestion. Our muscles need to work now. So our digestion stops. Or if we're watching something that's, you know, horrific or um, sad on the TV, we go into that fight or flight or stress. So the body automatically then says, all right, we don't need the digestion switched it off because we need the heart palpitations, we need the sweaty hands, we need the heart pumping. So again, that's why a lot of people have problems, digestion or reflux or pain, because we're actually not concentrating on the food and allowing digestion to happen. We're worrying and thinking about other things. So I find my daily routine, if, if I can concentrate on eating just my brekkie and just having a shower without other thoughts coming in, that sets me up for the day. Mm. That's a really important one. If we're all so busy eating on the run, like just take that 
time out to enjoy your meal and it'll also give you that headspace well, clarity. <laughs> we get the headspace, but we also get the nourishment of the food and the nutrients can be absorbed properly. So we do then have a better brain capacity because we can use the food properly in our body. So it allows us to be more focused. You know, we can concentrate better. Our memories are improved. And that's when our creativity flows, especially, you know, with your your um, listeners, a lot of them have tourism operations. We're always trying to, you know, be more creative with what we do or invent new things. So if we, you know, have a clear, focused mind, those ideas will just start flowing. Mm, love it. And uh internet resource that is your go-to that helps you with your day-to-day progress or your productivity do you have any digi tools that you could share with us that help you with your flow so recently I've started using sort of one note having everything in one spot just because my business has so many different aspects to it I found before you know I'd have a notebook for this and a meaning book for this and a diary for this and I felt that was being unproductive. I was finding I was a bit scattered all over the place. So I find with OneNote now through Microsoft, I can have everything in the same spot. And also with their personal organizer, I have everything in one spot rather than three notebooks and my laptop and a computer and a diary and all that sort of thing. So I find that's really good. And there's a lot of different ones like that as well. Um, and the other one I use a lot is Canva for when I'm doing my Instagram posts or, um, you know, Facebook posts and things like that, I find it's very simple to use. I'm all about being simple, easy, and but having, you know, something that's really good and can be, um, you know, shows great pictures and images as well. Love Canva, C-A-N-V-A. I'll add that in our little notes when I we, we publish this episode. Love it. OneNote I haven't explored or heard about before, OneNote. So that's a Microsoft product. Yeah, it's, I think it's quite new. I've just had a new laptop recently and it's one of the new programs. So it actually incorporates OneNote, will incorporate, you know, your Word, um, your publisher, your Excel and all your notes sort of in one spot. So you can have it then on your phone or you can have it on your laptop or your tablet so you can access your, you know, your notes also from whatever um, device you're using. Wherever you are. Nice one. Okay, so as we go through our little excellence round now, a book that you would recommend to tourism harbours and and why? So, as you know, I mean, there's some awesome books (laughs) out there. One I've come across recently is called Lynchpin by Seth Godin. Mm. So, C-H-P-I-N. Have you read that one? Yes, I have, yeah. So I just love especially the fact of, you know, being in the tourism area, we really always, you know, need to be finding new ways to, you know, invent and reinvent our products so we can still continually be the best. And um, Seth talks about how we can, you know, become indispensable in our job, whether you work for someone else or whether it's your own business and you want your product to continually to be the best or continually to, you know, progress in the future. So it talks about, you know, loving what you do and being passionate about what you do, but how you can invent or reinvent new ideas for your business, how you can connect with others, how you deal with your emotions and how you relate to other people's emotions and just how you can, you know, be courageous to just go out there and just make yourself indispensable. So companies feel like they want to keep you. And I talk a lot about that in a lot of my sessions, especially emotional intelligence, about, you know, there's great leaders and and managers out there that are very good with their expertise, they you know probably the best in their field. But now they're bringing that emotional intelligence. If you actually don't have the mind to know how to interact and connect with your staff or know how to deal with your own emotions, then this is where um, people are falling short because they can have all the expertise, but they can't deal with the stress or the resilience or they can't connect with their team and then they're finding there's conflict. So it's coming back to that whole how we deal with our emotions and so Seth talks a lot about that in the book, but how we really can become indispensable whether we work for someone else or whether we have our own business and we want to be you know, successful for a long period of time. Mm, so it's just being a sustainable business, that's, uh, that's really important. Uh, so in going back to even your visitor centre, visitor information centre days and dealing with many of the you know, tourism operators and accommodation providers, 
what would be your parting piece of guidance for our experience makers? I think working the Tourism um, Visitor Centre and also I used to be the executive officer of Wine Geelong, so looked after all the wineries in the region, which was great because I ran all the, uh, the events in the region. I feel that it's all about an experience and how you can make people feel. And I know that you all sort of talk about, um, Myra um, Angelo, the feeling about people don't remember what they saw, what they heard, but they'll remember how they feel. Mm. So I feel that when people used to come to the visitor centre or when I used to run Toast of the Coast, I wanted people to have an experience that they loved, that they would remember, that they would talk to about for years with their friends or family. So I want them to, you know, come in and think, wow, I love that experience on the surf coast or the Great Ocean Road. I love that event that I went to. You know, they made me feel, you know, motivated. I had fun. I laughed all day. Or the person in the visitor centre, you know, made me feel supported. Or those questions that they, uh, they um, asked, they, you know, really listened to the answer. They gave me a really good array of feedback or thoughts or ideas. So I really think, again, and I know you feel the same way, it's all about how we make people feel and the experience they have when they're with us. And you want it to be a positive and a long, you know, a long standing feeling. So they'll always think back of you thinking, well, yeah, I remember that person. They made me feel great or they made me feel inspired or they made me, you know, I felt something different or, you know, I'd never experienced that event or that activity before. Mm. Now, where can we best connect with you? And do you, do you have any retreats coming up? So at the moment, I haven't got any actual retreat like weekend retreats, but I do have an emotional intelligence one day course in Geelong being held on the 8th of November in Geelong. So this one is a whole day going really into that positive psychology and emotional intelligence for business owners or leaders or people at work that really want to create a better way of working, how they can manage their emotions, how they can connect better with staff, how they can really just get that cutting edge on your business. So, yeah, so that's sort of running coming up soon. Um, The best way to connect, I've got a um, website. It's revitalizewithazlifestyle.com. Instagram is joe, J-O, at revitalize. And I'm on Facebook as Revitalize Lifestyle Retreat. Excellent. I'll add all those in and, and also more information about your emotional intelligence full day workshop on the 8th of November. And to finish strong, Miss Jo, uh, your favourite quote of all time? Yeah, so um, <laughs> of course, again, there's so many. And this one has been quite recent. I was in a conference up in Sydney called Happiness and All Its Causes in June and I was lucky enough to meet a lovely man called Shamash and he's all about um, mindfulness but he does a lot of mindfulness in the workplace. He actually was the one that wrote the Dummies Mindfulness, yeah, the Dummies book on Mindfulness in the Workplace. And he has a quote um, that says, each time something goes wrong, rather than thinking you failed, think you succeeded. And he, in the quote of that, he says, see failure and success as success. So he says, I mean, you know, success is a word that combines failure and success. Each time something goes wrong, rather than thinking you've failed, think you have succeeded because you can only learn from our failures. We don't learn from our successes. So I've always felt that was a positive attitude to, to failure because, you know, we try things and they don't work and often we sort of think, oh, we've failed. But, you know, we have to try and try to work out what works. So I've always felt that was, yeah, I like the word we've succeeded. So, yes, we might have failed, but, you know, next time we'll probably succeed because we've learned that way it doesn't work. Oh, my God, I love that so much. So instead of going this is an F up, you say this is a success. That's right. So you can and you can say that with conviction, and That's I don't even have to put the little e explicit language. Um, that is that is clever. That is clever because that's so true. It's a gift. It's a gift sometimes too to just because uh, yeah, you don't fail, you learn. That is a cool one. Thanks for sharing that, Joe. And I always find that, you know, from those failures, we become more resilient resilient, and, you know, there's challenges in life. So we can be, become stronger and more resilient than, you know, we are going to succeed. And if we're passionate enough and we have the drive, we will succeed with what we want to do. Mm, 
Very, very true. Joe. it has been a pleasure. I've been really looking forward to this uh, this catch-up with you. I wish you all the best and uh, there will be more on Joe on instituteofexcellence.com forward slash podcast. Otherwise, please head over to revitalizelifestyle.com. It's just .com, isn't it? That's correct. Joe, yeah, yep. revitalizelifestyle.com. Com and learn more about um, about what Joe's up to and the upcoming events and retreats uh, that she'll be hosting as well. Okay, Joe, thank you, and uh, we will talk again very soon, my friend. Thank you, Despen. It's been lovely talking to you, and all the best with everyone that's listening with their business. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, bye for now. Bye. Relax. Relax. Yeah.